What is up, Raider Nation? It's your boy Samori back at it again with another video. And this is a huge week, not only for the Raiders, but for the Raider Nation because we officially get to see the Raiders play some football this week on Thursday for the Hall of Fame game. Now, I know it's not a really, really important game for a lot of people out there, maybe not even for the team, but it just feels good to finally see some Raiders football back in action, whether it's the second, third, fourth, fifth, sixth stringers out there. I'm just happy that we finally get to see the Raiders play some freaking football out there now it's going to be really interesting because we have a newly revamped team with a new head coach new gm uh, a lot of new players most of them coming from new england we've added a lot of pieces to this team offensively and defensively and just a couple of days ago we find out some not so good news uh raiders have placed linebacker kyler fackrell to the IR, basically ending his 2022 season. Now, this is a big loss for the Raiders. Uh, you know, Fakro just signed a one-year, $1.1 million contract with the team, and he was expected to be the third pass rusher on the team, you know, right behind Max Crosby and Chandler Jones. And now, after hearing this news, we might never see Kyler Fakro in a silver and black uniform. Again, I mean, he signed a one-year deal with the team, but who knows if the team is going to bring him back next year. But this does open up some opportunities for guys like Cleveland Farrell and Malcolm Coons to step up and take over that spot. And to add to the not-so-good news, just yesterday, Tashawn Reed tweeted out that linebacker Micah Kaiser left Sunday's practice early with a leg injury. Again, another offseason signing by the Raiders going down an injury. Hopefully, it's nothing too serious but we'll find out in these next upcoming days. This, however, is going to be a huge opportunity for rookie linebacker Darren Butler to possibly make the final 53. He's a guy that's been on a lot of people's radars as well as mine's. In other news, though, the Raiders have added running back Andrew Walter to the roster. Walter entered the league as an undrafted free agent in 2019, then spent some time on the Giants, Niners, and the Jets before making his way to Las Vegas. In his career, he's played in nine games, rushing 27 times for 101 yards and one touchdown, also adding two receptions for nine yards. Walter basically adds more depth to the running back room while Zamir White works his way back from injury. And speaking of Zamir White, we finally got to see him back on the field during Saturday's practice. Tashawn Reed first reported this, tweeting, Raiders running back Zamir White is back at practice. It's a good sign though. From what I hear, he's looking real solid in practice. Hopefully, we'll get a chance to see him play on Thursday, especially knowing that none of the starters and even the second stringers are gonna play. Now in the last couple of days, the Raiders have worked out a couple of players to possibly fill this roster for the preseason. Those players being Edge, Amari Cobb, linebacker Curtis Bolton, linebacker Jordan Evans, running back Master Teague, and running back Max Borgie. Out of all the names on this list, the one that really gets me hyped up is Max Borgie. If you guys have not seen this dude play or seen any of his highlights, I recommend you guys go see it after the video, obviously. Now, I'm not gonna say that he plays like a certain somebody, but the dude can play. If the Raiders do sign him, I'm not expecting him to come in and take over the running back room, but just to see him play in preseason would be entertaining. Borgie was an undrafted free agent for the Indianapolis Colts, but was released after minicamp. In his four years at Washington State, he's recorded 369 carries for 2,158 yards and 32 touchdowns, also adding 156 receptions for 1,134 yards and nine touchdowns. After reading off that stat line, it definitely gives me some CMC vibes. Now, I'm not saying that he's going to be the next CMC, I'm just saying that he he has those same skill sets. If the Raiders do end up giving him a chance, then I, I do believe that he could be a solid camp body for the team. Now, I know that we recently just signed Walter and we still have Brandon Brown and Amir Abdullah. But like I said before, I don't feel like we're going to play any of our main guys. So I feel like bringing him in would add some more depth to that running back room, at least for the preseason games. You know, we're not going to see no Josh Jacobs, no Kenny and Drake. We probably won't even see any Brandon Bolden. And I don't even know if Zamir White is going to be back and ready to go once preseason does start. Well, it looks like we got some breaking news, though. Just a couple of minutes ago, Deshaun Reed just posted that the Raiders have signed linebacker Curtis Bolton, who's out here practicing for the first time. Probably a solid indication about what's next for fellow linebacker Micah Kaiser, who was carted off yesterday. Now, Bolton only played in six games for the Lions in 2021, recording five tackles, one pass breakup, and one quarterback hit. Well, there goes your depth at the linebacker position. But it doesn't seem like good news for Michael Kaiser, like I said, who went down yesterday. Hopefully, hopefully it's nothing too serious because he's a guy that I was expecting to watch this season. But I'll keep you guys updated when I hear more. Now, one thing that I've been talking about throughout this whole offseason is the fact that I'm really excited to finally see how this offense is going to look, especially under Derek Carr and, and with the new weapons that he does have. 
And there's a lot of reports going around that, you know, Derek Carr is looking real comfortable with this new offense. There's been a lot of big plays going on in training camp, whether or not they have the pads on. Uh, that connection with Devontae Adams is still there. You still got other guys like Tyron Johnson uh, stepping up and whatnot. Uh, but there's there's been a lot of reports, a lot of tweets, and uh, I've seen a lot of them go around. You know, there's one from Levi Edwards. He tweeted out just a couple of days ago that Devontae Adams, as he's known to do, got loose on the coverage, resulting in Derek Carr hitting him in stride from about 55 yards in the end zone. GM Dave Ziegler was there to celebrate with Adams in the end zone. Now that really gets me excited and I know it gets a lot of the Raider Nation excited as well, especially for this connection. But another guy that has been showing a lot of love is James Jones, who was actually at the Raiders training camp just yesterday. He tweeted out, just finished watching the Raiders practice. I smell 2K coming for 1-7. Now that's some big expectations right there, but it's good to see a former Raider slash Packer, you know, actually seeing that, that connection in person. And I'm pretty sure on Sundays, these two are fun to ball out. But not only is Derek Carr showing out with guys like Devontae Adams and Hunter Renfro, he's also been impressive with and has been showing a lot of love to the other guys as well. Guys like Tyron Johnson, Keelan Cole, Demarcus Robinson, and Mac Hollins. Derek Carter does not shy away from showing a lot of love to his guys and the media as well, saying, Keelan has really impressed me with his ability to turn in the air to make catches. His ability on the sideline, he's really good. There is never a doubt if he's in or out. Some guys just have a natural feel of where they are on the field. As for Robinson, he said that Robinson has flashed that talent, that speed that we have seen happen against us for a few years. He's flashed those same things here, that ability to be someone that could stretch the field and also run the intermediate to short stuff and make something happen afterwards. Now, as for Mac Collins, Mac is someone that does everything. He's a big body. Obviously, he's made a great career playing some special teams and being able to play all the positions at receiver. Now, after hearing all that high praise from Derek Carr, it's really going to be fun to see who makes the final cut. But just to hear that this offense has been looking real good and training camp really gets me excited. And hopefully we can see that same production on the field during game days. As of today though, this will be the final practice for the Raiders before heading out to Canton to get ready for Thursday's game. Now some guys that weren't at practice today, according to Tashawn Reed, Ritten Brown, Darren Waller, Cleveland Farrell, Tyler Lancaster, Micah Kaiser, Amik Robertson, Rock Yassin, Anthony Avery, Roderick Teamer and Chandler Jones. Now, as for Jones, this is the fourth straight practice that he's missed. And as for Titan Darren Waller, this is the second straight practice. I, I don't know whether or not we should be worried, but we'll see how things pan out in these next coming days. Now, I do want to talk about some notable players that had a good day at practice today. One of those guys being second year cornerback, Nate Hobbs. According to Vinny B, he tweeted out some really, really good work being put in by Raiders cornerback Nate Hobbs while locked up with Devontae Adams. Very impressive. Now, when you're going one-on-one -on -one with the great one and you're holding up your own, then that's a good sign. But Vinny B wasn't the only guy that tweeted this. Your boy Q also tweeted that Nate Hobbs had a nice pass breakup on a DC to Adams potential touchdown. Great recovery from Hobbs to break up the pass. Hashtag Raiders. Hobbs is a guy that's going to be playing with a chip on his shoulder. It's just great to hear that he's doing good in practice, especially holding up his own against guys like Devontae Adams and I'm pretty sure everyone else. I also do got to give a little quick shout out to Nate Hobbs for being a man of the people. Yesterday at practice, when it was drenched, raining, pouring out here in Henderson, Nevada, he stayed back and signed a couple of autographs for the nation. He was the only player that did that. So again, shout out to Nate Hobbs, man. You definitely a real one. Another player that has been getting a lot of praise and has been getting shown a lot of love is offensive lineman Lester Cotton Sr. According to my boy Q, he tweeted out today that he was very impressed by the fight and the one from Lester Cotton Sr. To even be in the position that he is today, he leaned on his faith in God and his wife. He's an easy guy to root for. And that is true though. He's definitely gonna be one of those guys that's gonna be on my radar, especially during preseason. Hopefully he can find a way to insert himself and replace Denzel Good in the starting lineup, but it's not gonna be easy. If there's one thing that we've learned throughout these camps is the fact that these starting offensive line spots are wide open, but Cotton has found a way to insert himself in the mix after being released by the team on four different occasions. You got a room full of guys is uh that's very talented and very smart, and uh, they compete each and every day. And um, no, no starter is like guaranteed on the line. We compete with each other. It's a brotherhood. Like it's, it's not like no, you know, ill will towards no one. Like we all like together because you just never know who will be on the side of you. So. 
even our quarterback Derek Carr has come on record and talked about how proud he was of how far Cotton has come to get to the point that he is at right now. I told Lester when we were walking to our car the other day, I said, Lester, I'm so proud of you because through the cuts, through the re-signs, through the this, through the that, all this kind of new schemes, all, you have done nothing but put your head down. You've been in there with AJ, AJ Nibel. You've worked your butt off and now you're getting reps and all these kind of things. And, and I said, you look, you look good, man. You're doing, you're doing some good things. As of right now though, Kyle looks to be the favorite at guard, but we'll see once the season does start. With that being said though, Raider Nation, do you guys believe that Lester Cotton has a chance to start on this offensive line? Let me know your thoughts down in the comments below. All right, Raider Nation, that is all I have for you guys today. If you guys enjoyed this video, don't forget to hit that like button. Also, if this is the very first time you're coming across my channel and you love the Las Vegas Raiders, then hit that subscribe button, hit that notification icon button just to notify you guys when I upload more videos just like this. Also, before I end this video, like I've been telling you guys, over and over and over again for these past couple of days. We are just 30 days away from the week zero Raider Nation kickoff party in Atlanta, California, August 27, 2022. So if you guys are trying to come through and kick it with us, we got two short corrupt performing. We've got a lot of other content creators gonna be over there. We got some Raider players, including Warren Sapp, Stu, and, and, and some more that have not been named yet all gonna be in the same spot, partying it up with the rest of the Raider Nation and also enjoying the Burning Trees Festival that we'll be following up right after. So if you guys are trying to get your guys' tickets, I will put the link down in the comments below. With that being said, until the next video, this your boy Shimon Raider and your boy is, yeah. Started off in Oakland, now we here. Now we here. Thought that we was done, we just hit another gear, look. Started off in Oakland, now we here. Now we here. Hey, pull up with the nation in the silver black gear, look. Four games straight, we in the playoffs. Shout out to the Chargers fans, y'all enjoy the layoff.